This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's New Product Rundown features Kinetics Pucara and Early Harriers, as well as Italeri's P38. New Product Rundown brought to you by HobbyZone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's monthly video that breaks down the latest kits. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Tim Kidwell. Let's kick off this all aircraft episode by taking a look at the 148 scale kinetic IA-58 Pucara. This Argentine turboprop, ground attack and counterinsurgency aircraft entered service in 1975. It was almost immediately called out to carry out strikes against communist guerrillas in northwest Argentina. It would see more combat in the Falklands War, and the Sri Lankan Air Force used several in that country's long-running civil war. The slender fuselage halves are marked by fine recessed panel lines and petite raised and recessed rivets. The rudder hinge detail looks terrific, a feature reflected on the horizontal stabilizers. The one-piece lower wing half incorporates a section of the belly and appears to join on natural panel lines. Surface detail on the wings is a combination of recessed and raised panel lines and rivets. The ailerons are molded in place, but the separate flaps are designed to be posed extended. Detail in the tandem two-place cockpit includes side consoles with throttle quadrants and other controls, sides, multi-part ejection seats, control sticks, pedals, instrument panels, and shrouds. Sharply molded nose and main gear bay show structural and mechanical details and are complemented by good-looking gear doors, gear legs, and wheels. To finish the nacelles molded on the wings, the kit provides halves and a front for each engine. A separate piece covers the back and sandwiches the exhaust. Three-bladed props and pointy spinners finish the work. The two-part canopy features nicely molded frames. Clear plastic also provides lights and the gun sight. A small photo-etched metal fret supplies seat belts, canopy details, and vents for the IA-58D version. Cartograph decals designed by Two Bobs Aviation Graphics give markings for two Pucaras, an Argentine Air Force aircraft shot down by a Royal Navy Sea Harrier during the Falklands War. The pilot ejected and survived and an Uruguayan Picara with wraparound warthog nose art. My only complaint about the kit is the printing on the ladder diagram is so dark distinguishing the colors is difficult. This looks like a nice kit. It's interesting. Put it on a shelf with a Mohawk or a Bronco. Sticking with Kinetic, we have the latest releases in the company's early Harrier line, the GR1, GR3 used by the British and the AV8A used by the US Marines. The two kits are essentially the same except for decals. Let's take a look. It's always interesting to see how kit makers handle the Harrier's fuselage. Kinetic has molded the cockpit section with the main part. Surface detail is exceptionally fine recessed panel lines. Optional parts account for the pointy nose of the AV-8A and GR-1 and the laser tracking nose of the later GR-3s. Separate sleeves bulk up the interior of the intakes and optional parts allow for the auxiliary intakes to be posed closed or with the upper ones falling open as is typical of powered down Harriers. A one piece upper wing half sets the Harriers characteristic anhedral and includes the upper center of the fuselage and fine vortex generators. It and the lower wing halves show more fine surface detail. The flaps are separate and appear designed to pose only up Optional vertical tails account for those with and without sensors. The horizontal stabilizers are thin single parts with separate plates at the fuselage. Cockpit detail comprises a tub with molded console details and a separate bulkhead, controls, and optional Martin Baker and Stencil SEU-3A ejection seats. The latter were fitted to later AV-8As in USMC service. Different instrument panels are given for the British and American versions. The detailed nose gear bay doubles as the inner wall of the intake. It fits into a one-piece funnel that is fitted with a fan. An internal mechanism allows all four beautifully molded nozzles to move together. The rear gear bay is joined to an insert for the air brake. The gear legs show decent detail and the tires are molded separate from the wheels. To arm the Harriers, the kits include a variety of weapons, although many won't be used on either of these versions. Both may be fitted with Aiden gun pods and 100 gallon fuel tanks. While the AV-8A may be fitted with Sidewinder rails, only one of the British GR-3s is actually armed with AIM-9Ls. 
They may also be fitted with a couple of different rocket pods. The two-part canopy includes the debt cord canopy breaker molded in. Clear parts also provide lights and the HUD. A photo etched brass fret supplies the seat harness and various external features. Cartograph decals designed by Cross Delta are included in both kits. The GR1, GR3 kit supplies markings for seven Royal Air Force fighters, including one from the Falklands War. Six AV-8As are covered by the sheet in that kit, including a couple with colorful rudder stripes. These are nice looking kits, and the instructions do a great job of showing you how the build options work with the different marking choices. Next up, let's take a look at Italeri's 172nd scale P-38J Lightning. Now at one time, Italeri reboxed Dragon's P-38J in this scale. This is not that kit. Instead, you get Academy's terrific Lightning, which Paul Boyer described as the best P-38 in 172nd scale. Academy hasn't re-released it since 2005, so it's great to see it back on shelves. Most of the center pod is molded with the wings. Surface detail on the airframe looks great, fine lines and rivets. The lower half includes the nose gear bay with molded detail. The booms are molded in halves, with one-piece openings for the radiator intakes, and chin intakes, as well as inserts for the superchargers. The horizontal tail has detail finesse that matches the wings, and the separate nose has holes for individual gun barrels. Cockpit details include a floor with radio deck, sides with molded equipment and wiring, seat with frame, control yoke, backrest, and instrument panel. The handed individual prop blades are keyed to fit into the two-part spinners. Sharply molded landing gear legs are capped with equally well-molded wheels. The boarding ladder is included. For under-wing stores, the kit provides fuel tanks, bombs, and bazookas. The clear parts provide optional open and closed canopies, lights, and the gun sight. In addition to seat belts and stencils, the beautifully printed decals supply markings for four U.S. Lightnings. Miss Anne, a blue over black fighter in England in March 1944, Bambi, an olive drab over neutral gray P-38 in England in January 1944, Curly Six, a natural metal fighter in France in October 1944, and T. Rigor Mortis, another natural metal bird in New Guinea in 1944. This is a terrific looking Lightning and it should be a straightforward build. Look for reviews of the Harriers and the Pucara on Fonscale.com. And you can find more new products there too, as well as in the March issue on sale now. And while you're there, visit Kalmbach Hobby Store to buy books, gifts, and this nifty A10 face mask that Aaron is modeling right now. Thanks for watching. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Tim Kibwell. We'll see you next time. Here come the, here come the uh, bloopers. Yep. These are nice looking kits, and the instructions do a great job of showing you how the different build options work for the market. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I thought we were.